So you're looking at the, um, the ZX Spectrum that um, I wanted when I was a kid. Basically it was a 48k model, um, originally a rubber keyboard, which was like every other ZX Spectrum out there, but it always felt kind of toy-like, um, whereas DK Tronics brought out a real keyboard, um, minus the spacebar, which came later on another um, later model, but it also had proper switch keys which felt good and felt like a proper computer rather than a toy. It also has um, a DKtronics joystick port um, which was a turbo model which could actually slow down or speed up the game action as well so you could actually use the joystick and literally slow down or speed up your character on a game to help you get through the levels more easily. And as you can see, we have a quite a nice joystick attached to it. And on this machine, we have an SD card reader with games. And this one, you have Monty on the Run playing in the background. At the time, it was a quite an expensive system. You, you're talking probably the equivalent of about a thousand pounds in today's money for the Spectrum, the keyboard, the case, the joystick port. And the joystick, obviously the SD card and reader wasn't around then, but you know, it was getting on for quite a chunk of money. And I think the problem was is that most people couldn't really afford such a system, especially if you were just a kid. So what about DK Tronics and what made them so successful really in the add-on world for especially for those um, ZX Spectrum and also the Amstrad. Well, they started in 1981 and it was started by David Heels, who was then the managing director. Um, and the first model was a 16 kilobyte expansion pack for the ZX80. Um, and it was kind of released only just before the ZX81 came out. And it was quite a good success. He was working part time, but once the ZX81 came out and he brought in new keyboards, which originally were bare bones, um, the company literally started to take off. The sales took off, and he then released keyboards on a very similar, if not the same, type of keyboard for the ZX Spectrum. So they also produced. Um, other products such as joystick ports, light pens, music keyboards, they produced um, memory expansion packs for both the Sinclair models and the Amstrad models and also they brought out quite a number of games throughout their history. They were based in Great Yarmouth and they, the company finally dissolved in 1993 and in that time they gained a good reputation because of the quality of their products and in between their um, sort of highlight of their company they also took over Cora um, and acquired the technology but everything kind of came to the end when really the 8-bit micros all faded away because most computers then came out with proper keyboards and quite decent memory and also joystick ports built in which kind of killed off their market really but if we look at the products they do have they're actually very good and they turn what was a very cost cut design choice in where Sinclair cut the cost on the keyboards into a machine that was actually very capable and uh, could be used for more things than just playing games because the key switched keyboards you could actually type on them all day long and they were very very good quality. So the setup we have here and the one you saw at the beginning of this video um, was really what the ZX Spectrum should have been from the beginning and it would have um, probably made a lot more headway into more professional markets for education and for business. 
Thank you for listening to my ultimate ZX Spectrum.